We'll now examine the landmarks of the patient's upper extremity. To begin, we'll start with the acromioclavicular joint. To find this, start the patient's clavicle or their collarbone, which we told you how to find in the anterior torso video, and work your way laterally until you come out to where it meets with the acromion of the scapula. So the scapula starts in the back, it actually has a few processes that wrap around to the front, to the anterior side. One of those is the acromion process, which if you palpate right above your humerus, you'll feel a bump up to this acromion, and you follow this clavicle over to where it meets that acromion, there'll be a little bit of a joint space there, a little bit of a cleft or a gap, and that's the acromioclavicular joint, where the scapula connects with the clavicle above the humerus. We just went over how to find that acromion. It's just lateral to that acromioclavicular joint. It's part of the, actually part of the scapula. Next, find the patient's coracoid process, which is another process of the scapula that wraps around to the anterior portion of the arm or to, of the chest. To find this, we'll take our whole hand and use our palm and push forward on that patient's shoulder. Right here, where the tip of my finger is, I'm feeling a bump or a process, a bony process that I felt with the palm of my hand. So again, we'll start with our palm and just push posteriorly into the patient's back, gently at first and then more and more until you feel where that bump is. That's the coracoid process. Now quickly before I keep going, I want to go over the anatomic position of the arm. And to, find the, or to maintain the anatomic position of the arm, we want the patient's palm to be facing forwards and the arm will be extended and pretty much relax for the patient, except the one key thing to note is that the patient's hand will be fully supinated or the palm will be facing forwards. Next, we'll find the patient's greater tubercle of their humerus. To do this, we'll find that acromion and we'll drop down just below it and we'll find a big bump or a tubercle on the uh, patient's humerus. Another way to find this is that the patient flex their arm and drop right up the tip of that acromion, find that greater tubercle, and the next two things, it, these three things all kind of go together. So the three things are the greater tubercle, the lesser tubercle, and the intertubercular groove. So while we're palpating what we think is the greater tubercle, we'll have the patient externally rotate their arm and we'll feel our finger go through a divot and then onto another smaller bump. Now the first bump, the one I'm currently on while the patient's arm is internally rotated, is the greater tubercle. As we externally rotate, we'll feel that intertubercular groove or that valley in between the two tubercles. And that, then I'll find this smaller bump here as the patient fully externally rotates their arm, and that is the lesser tubercle. So again, that trick to find the tubercles is that the patient flex their arm, go to what you think is the greater tubercle, a big bump, and then check it by externally rotating and feeling your way through that valley and onto the smaller bump, the lesser tubercle. Next is the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Now the anatomic position of the arm is like such. So the medial side is going to be this side of the arm because it's towards the patient's midline. And we're going to palpate down along that humerus. On the medial side will be the medial epicondyle, that bony protuberance. And the lateral side over here will be the lateral epicondyle, that bony protuberance. If we have the patient flex their arm, we can feel along the posterior side of that arm for the olecranon process, also known as the tip of your elbow. Now this process is actually a part of the patient's ulna, which is a bone in their forearm. We'll look for the patient's radial head, which is the head of the radius, the bone that's in the forearm along the thumb side, here along the posterior side. So to do this, we'll have the patient flex their arm, and I'll feel along uh, just lateral to that olecranon process for a bump. And to check this, you have the patient supinate and pronate their hand. Now the radial head actually spins in place, so you'll be able to feel that spinning when you're palpating the correct radial head, which I am currently feeling. We'll then move on to the styloid process of the radius, which will be on the radius side, the thumb side, and the ulna, which will be on the pinky or ulnar side of the forearm. To do this, you'll palpate down along the forearm until you reach those bony protuberances on either side. That is the styloid process of the radius and the styloid process of the ulna. One last thing to note is if we have the patient take their thumb, so flip their, uh, pronate their hand over from anatomic position and uh, laterally extend their thumb, we'll see two uh, tendons here. 
In between these tendons is known as the anatomical snuff box. If you palpate inside this snuff box very carefully because it can be tender, you'll feel the scaphoid bone of the patient's wrist. This is one of the most fractured, most commonly fractured bone of the wrist or of the hand.